<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've got this straightened out finally. Grim, I think. I haven't done it in a few months. Got a little sloppy. Uh, this is Flash Somebody at the world famous Dork Table. Yeah, I, I had made a mistake, but I corrected it. And today we're going to do a solo show, try to throw an hour of garbage out there for all you, uh, <clears throat> hey, Grim, for all you people and peopleettes in the world that I don't know what the fuck we're doing, but I'm going to try to do the hellos and get on a rant of some kind or another in a minute. And thanks, Grimner, for all the help. And He always bails me out of the predicaments I get into with this radio stuff. Cause if I don't do it regularly, I, I kind of forget what I'm doing and how to do it and stuff like that. I need a little hand. So, thanks a lot for that. And if you're in a chatting kind of mood, we have the most interesting chat room <laughs> available to uh, people with opposing opinions. And for your chatting extravaganza, today we've got lined up for you Bots and Bodies, Barman, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Rob Works, Asmu, Beetle, Beth C, Chalcedony, Circolo, I think she's logged on, she took a nap or something, uh, me, and Java Doctor 2, Redneck Dentist, he's a new, new uh, radio guy. On the reallibertymedia.com. Uh, Vanna White, Wed Dork, The Phantom, CC66, and Civ, Free and Slaved. Matt, WJ20202, Mr. Snick, The Holiest Roger, and Z Picks. So, some of these folks are logged in, and some of them, they lurk. I lurk. I made a. Oh, man. I don't know. Sometimes it's just more fun to read shit and stay out of it. And sometimes, like last night, it's more fun to jump in and tell people what I think about what somebody's doing. You know, it's an opinion. It could be wrong, but it's still something that, depending on how you say it, I think, is, uh, will set the stage for the necessary actions to be taken. Some people occasionally need a timeout. I needed a timeout, so I gave myself one for a couple of months now. And a lot of that was, I just felt that there's really nothing new under the sun. These are just reruns of old stories and games the system's been doing to us forever. This is not new. Now, the internet, <laughs> wow, the internet is working against, in a sense, against the people that know better. Because... Populations believe their leadership is doing something for them. <laughs> what they're doing for them isn't as good as they think, but, uh, hmm. well, I guess we all have our own s singular way of interpreting this society that we live in. And uh, I think I'm going to call today's show. I'll work on notes, but I'm, uh, I'll do that afterward. I'm not going to do them through the show. I just feel yakking. But for a title for today's show, I think n there is no such thing as rational intervention. <laughs> and and we'll start with uh, the government. I mean, fuck, they're the ones that are really responsible for all this crap we're, we're dealing with right now. And the more people I speak to verbally in here where I live, in this faraway land, uh, the more people I meet that are, are fed up to their eyeballs with being told what to do when there's no reason to do it. So, I, I'm i kind of pissed off it took this long to get here. Oh, Twitter has always been a fucked up, Mr. Grimner. Yeah, just, I'm easy, uh, <laughs> I'm the first one to leave. You know, when things are fucked up, why stay? You know, what's the fucking point? of being threatened with, well, censor you. I don't like being censored. I mean, if you don't like what I say, iggy me or don't listen. But, you know, that's where I draw the line. If it goes beyond, you know, not paying attention, then 
gets personal, then things change. And that's always a matter of interpretation. And we went through this about three months ago. I'm not going to bring it back up. I, I will kind of am, but I'm not. You know, just using it as a hmm, an excuse for why I do what I do. I don't know why other people do what they do, nor do I care. I only know what I recognize other people to do and how I interpret it, just like them. Yeah. So, hmm, life is really fucked up. You know, nine and a half years, I started out, I had a, two parents and a brother. It was my, you know, my inside family. And in nine and a half years, I've managed to outlive the whole crew. And they're all dead now. Every fucking one of them. All three. And the saddest part about it is, uh, my brother was in, of course, in England, and he lives in the uh, COVID hell of the Queen. So apparently, when uh, his girlfriend found me on on, uh, on the RLM, I was even hiding out. I didn't even want anybody to really know me. Uh, I was just avoiding it all. She didn't. I don't think she ever figured out that that was me. She was just trying to pass on the message that my brother got is gone. But <laughs> the COVID took it. No, it didn't. My brother's been sick for about 50, about 50 years, something like that. Injuries, accidents, uh, you name it, that boy did it. You know, he, he was even a, a real rodeo idiot, run around in, on chasing cows and shit. So if anything killed him, it, it was because... He was already ill, and he's been ill for a long, long time. He got <laughs> got nailed about, I guess, 10 years ago by a, an accident where he worked, and a big heavy load fell on him. And the last time I seen him a few years back, he came here. He was walking with a cane, like a cripple. So maybe he did get the COVID and died of the flu, but I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, like he... His health wasn't all that great in the first place. And he was a, a big drinker. He liked to drink every day. And these things that we do to ourselves set us up for the state to, you know, make a profit. And uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything about Twitter. You guys, you know, I understand you need that kind of big source of information. But where I'm living, uh, everything is censored. And, the, and if it's not censored by the government because of financial reasons, it's censored by the platforms that supply them to you <laughs> because, well, they don't want you to be misinformed about uh, stuff, you know, because we're here in the 21st century, okay? And your, your average Joe has no idea how many viruses live on their skin all their life. <laughs> you, you need some of these things. You have a thing called an immune system. It worked fine until 2020 came along, and all of a sudden, <laughs> no, nobody had an immune system anymore. You can't depend on that. You need a vaccine and a mask and stay away from people and stay out of the sun. Everything they told us was garbage. We all know that here at RLM, except for one guy, maybe two or three. I, I I try not to block everybody, but there are a few personalities to just, nah, I don't want to play the legal games. I don't care about law. If you're in 2021 and you're still dependent on the fucking system to fix the system, then you're a bigger idiot than I am. Now, that might sound cruel, but you know that's my opinion. My opinions are not shared by the masses. I know you find that hard to believe. But, yeah, I think like maybe, I don't know, 1% or 2% of the people probably understand the things I see the way I see them. And it's not really difficult, but there is a step you must take. You have to open your eyes and look. And when you interpret what you see, stop letting other people tell you what you see. Use your own mind. Think about it for a minute. Of course, it's not popular because you might think something different and everybody else will laugh at you. Hmm. Well, if that's the biggest thing that ever happens, hmm. 
Let's see. Grimner says, I've been on the stay away from people train for a long time. Well, Grimner, I I appreciate that about you. But, you know, as far as on the electronic world, Jesus Christ, you're always there to give me a hand when I, you're available and I, I need something. You've never told me, no, go away. Oh, I'm busy. Oh. Oh, if you donate a little bit more money, then I'll do it for you. You don't play those games, people. Well, I understand that the distancing, the distancing from them where you live. I once lived in a faraway land called the USA. And I think hindsight being twenty twenty, I really didn't give two fucks about any of this shit. The political shit or... The religious shit, the education shit. I just avoided it all. Stayed away from it. I just knew it was bad. Don't bother with this crap. It goes nowhere. Okay. So, in in the nine and a half years I've been gone, (laughs) uh, 49 states out of 50 have turned into complete and total totalitarian dictatorships. Pretty much. I'm at least looking on through the internet webs. And by reading the text from people that live in places, there's not a lot of happy people (laughs) regarding the safety measures that the governments that go around murdering people and shit are imposing on the population for their benefit. (laughs) They're playing off the fool that really believes the government is, without the government, what would I do? Wow, you wouldn't even miss them if you, if you want to know the truth. It would be so easy to do, but people are afraid. And I'm sure we all, even me in some areas, live in a state of fear. But I'm not afraid of the the, the typical shit. You know, oh, I could get caught driving without a license. Well. <clears throat> Well, I've been a passenger in a car in America and had the police draw guns and point them at me. I wasn't even driving. <laughs> so, no, I don't, think a, I don't think a license really makes any difference. Once the cops make up their mind, you're finished. But I guess that's, again, a matter of opinion. That's a lot of shit. Okay. My opinions may be a lot of shit, but they're my opinions. And, uh, well, I, don't know. I guess we're, we're at this time where everybody thinks uh, words hurt. It's not words that hurt. It's being abandoned and uh, ridiculed. Mm, I, I kind of take that or leave. Sometimes I get pissed. Sometimes I don't. kind of depends on who's doing the ridiculing. And instead of engaging, ah, just avoid it. You know, there's no reason to uh, say fuck off and die. I don't get it. I don't want anybody to fuck off and die. I, what I want them to do is get this freaking COVID the fuck over with so we could you know, live a life that we used to live. But there's so, <laughs> there's so many morons supporting this ignorance about... Uh, a illness that replaced the flu, the common cold, because those two things killed as many people as they're claiming COVID killed. Yet nobody died of the flu. It's just amazing. I don't understand. My limited intelligence is holding me back in this world. <laughs> Let me see through my notes. I've been jotting down little ideas. Topics to rant about on the Dork Table Podcast. Because I miss Miss Mary. She just would say something and it would lead me to think of something. But I don't have that luxury anymore. So we lost Miss Mary to her family. She she may return, but then again, she may not. Well, here we go. Uh, yesterday, people were uh, disagreeing about words on the chat room. You know, uh, one of the words was subjective. Now, that's an interesting word, but it's pretty limited. Subjective is how you feel about something. And objective is how something truly is, I think. 
I mean, to sum it up in just a few words, maybe there's some grammar Nazis on the internet chat room. The RLM, that could clear me up, because I shoot my mouth off like a free man every chance I get. But, you know, is observing, is that subjective? When you look at shit, and you ponder it, and you figure out what colors and what things about it you like or don't like, is is that objective or is that subjective? See, I don't think there's levels of the word. You're either using subjective or you're using objective. Now, that's fun. Uh, I don't think it's too late to escape. I wanted to bring this up. I've been reading shit about South Dakota or Dakota. And I am the farthest thing from a status there is. But if you're politically minded and you live in a place where you rely on government to help you through these terrible times, it makes sense to pick the best place to, that there is to go. And I somehow got a link about this governor of uh, South Dakota, Naomi something. Kind of a nice looking little woman too. But through all her speech and all that, at the very end, as as kind of interesting as it was to listen to, I have to remember that she's reading a script too. No matter you know, no matter what I think, somebody has coached her and prompted her like Hitler, taught her how to speak to reach the audience. You, know, you say these things this way and it brings you these results. But when I put up stuff about South Dakota, wow, the only thing anybody noticed was that it was a, a CPAC, um, some kind of a conference or something. But I often open up shit, you know, Biden says, just to, so that I can witness it for myself and not just take somebody's word. Hey, you know, that President Biden's a real dick. Okay, why? Well, you got to listen to him. So I listened to him and I went, Wow, you know what? That Joe Biden's a dick. <laughs> and and people, now here's the beauty of this whole thing. There's some people that say, uh, it's always been like this. And they've seen through the layers of politics and propaganda and bullshit and the news and whatnot and got to where they're at. Did I get kicked off the RLM? Hmm. Nobody's chatting. Anyway, so, South Dakota didn't lock down is the, the main interest about this. The whole state, nothing. They didn't shut down the economy. They didn't shut down the schools. But this good-looking woman gets up there for 25 minutes to, you know, preach to the choir. But she says all, the, just all the right things about being responsible for your own health that, you know, <laughs> there was a time where it was expected of us that, we would be responsible for our own health, not told to go to the doctor because we might have a flu and kill grandma. <laughs> you know, and I know because uh, my best buddy here is a young guy, he's 27. And him and his girlfriend seem that they're a good couple, and me and Sir get along really good with them. So we have dinner once a week or so and hang out, smoke a little bit of the stuff, if you know what I'm talking about there, people. Cigarettes are bad for you. Don't smoke them. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> life. You know. Hey, okay. I just, it's harder to do this, Kate, without a partner to banter off. Grim knows what I'm talking about. And I've listened to Grim do solo stuff, and I understand the feeling, but the shows are just as, they're just as good when you're alone. It just, uh, it feels weird. Oh, a bushel of trash. I've never had a bushel of trash. But I think life is imitating art at this time, you know, where they make movies and they flood the media with movies about crap, like viruses and going to the moon and aliens attacking us. And the underlying theme is fear, 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 fear. You have got to be afraid. Everything is going to kill you. And if you can't grasp that and live in it, then the system doesn't need you. The system wants compliant cheap. That's 
That's a given. Yeah, most of the RLM crowd, they understand that. Now, there's a few holdouts that believe the state is going to, you know, wipe their ass after they take a dump and, you know, powder their nuts for them and pat them on the head when they do good, and spank them on the butt when they do bad, but we all know better, you know. They just haven't encountered a pissed off cop yet. They will eventually if they go out, you know. It's just a matter of time. Cops do not care. I've posted this a hundred times. The police do not have a duty to protect the citizenship in the United States, period. You can pursue that further if you want to and not believe me or whatever, but it's all a bunch of shit. These cops are murdering people. <laughs> you know, and every year they kill a black guy and get everybody all riled up and pissed off and then Soros hires some guys to go burn a few buildings down. I was looking through some of that. It struck me as <clears throat> the places that are being burnt out are the places that are owned by you know small people that don't have any uh, recourse. They can't fight back. They're, yeah, yeah, killed a black guy. Some cop killed a black guy the other day last week again. It's not my fault. I don't care. I really don't care in the first place, but, you know, what I did find out is South Dakota in the last, since 2001, has had 44 police shootings that they reported. Okay. Out of the 44, 22 of them were fatal, which is 22 too fucking many. But if you're living in a place where everything's burning and you're looking to escape, I'd look at that. That's all I was saying. thought it was fun. And no, I don't give a fuck. Why would I care? I don't live. I don't live in turmoil and chaos. I live in a quiet place. Where the Harleys came out today. It was so nice. Just a few of them. They can ride. Uh, they get insured from April to I think November. Can ride six months of the year. And some of the bikers ride anyway, but hmm, not too often. It's pretty quiet. But the April. Brings them out. Today I get to sit here in my chair and look out my window, see a couple of bikes go by. It was kind of cool. Um, let me see. What have I got in my notes? Not much, really. Um, I had, what did COVID accomplish? This was a question I never heard anybody ask. I've heard a lot of people say, uh, I don't want this and I don't want that, or I do want this and I don't want that, but what are you getting in the end for all this, I don't know, all this uh, compliance to strangers that are making money off you compliant? There, there should be no money involved in this at all. Medicine should be free. And then if medicine was free, well, the only people that would ever get forced to test something or forced to take something would be sick people. They wouldn't be attacking the healthy. <laughs> I guess they're running out of wars. So now they've come up with this. Hey, I know how we can kill these people off. We'll, we'll inoculate them with magic goo. Oh. Yeah, th that's a good way to put it. Because uh, I, I tend to miss the Americans. The people that I associated with, not the not the country, you know, not not the the city or the state, but the people. They, I had a lots lots and lots of fun in the, in the states, and over the last ten years, uh, people that I know, you know, that I knew, they're mostly dead. I mean, Christ, I lost a lot of friends in ten years, and mo all of my immediate family, but. Uh, Hmm. I got a new family, so it's not. It wasn't really a trade-off in my mind. It's just like an evolvement. You evolve into evolvement. There's a new word. But every every fucking country has natives that got robbed of their land. Canada, Australia, you name it. The, probably the state that where I'm sitting right now. Somebody else owned it 500 years ago, and these people came and conquered them, took it. People are just evil. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. They they just 
greed and gimme and I want and that's not enough. Oh, I'm not happy because I don't have a big car. I'm not happy because I don't have a big house. All these, all these things that we're all trained to worship like fucking poodles. It's stupid. Um, I don't. I share everything that I have with whoever I'm around. And as a result of doing that, the people that I hang around with bring shit to me. They go, hey, I only got one of these left. That's not going to really do much for me. Why don't you use it? I go, okay. <laughs> that sounds like a deal. Uh, little things, you know, small, not big things. Nobody, nobody gives me cars. <laughs> Shit like that. Anyway, I wouldn't really want the responsibility. Good Lord. Being responsible for circus. Shoes. That's more than plenty. Having all that exterior shit on top of that would just make me crazy. Well, I'm already crazy. So I'm going to start the Perpetual Victim Society. So that people that are victimized can say, Hey, take it out of my butt. I want to be free. <laughs> like that would change anything. Oh, well, we just got to learn to shut up and read the script. You know, so uh, I don't know. There's a guy that was on the on the chat room yesterday. Most of the people that chat in the room are anti-COVID uh, vax, vaccine. It's a, it's a big thing because some of us, have, like me, have relatives that supposedly... Now, according to my uh, sources, that Alan died from the COVID, but I'm sure he died with it. But how do you prove something like that? I don't even want to get into the legal shit that's going to come from all this. I'm going to try to avoid it and uh, let them have the money, <laughs> his wife or whatever she is now. Whatever he acquired or whatever, whatever debts he has, I, I don't want no part of any of that stuff. And People that know me know that. The people that listen to me on the radio probably think I'm full of shit. Because how can you pass up money? Well, I have some strange beliefs about life in general, especially currency and money and work ethic and all that crap. You get you get out of life what you put into life, I think. You know, and all this personality shit isn't what I'm talking about. I eat every day. I eat less every day than I am uh, than is available to me. I could eat all I want, but I don't. I'm, uh, I smoke more than I eat. Is I guess what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, in the long run, exactly. There's all these debts, but there could be cash connected to it. But with all this hoopla, with the drama of the you know, being quarantined to go to England and all. I'm not going to do any of that. I don't ever, I, I quit traveling way before I, this COVID crap ever hit. I didn't even want to go on the train. I told Cirque when we moved here, I found it. This is what I've always fucking wanted. How did, how did you know? And I've been here ever since. Don't want to go anywhere. I got friends that can go out in and out and come back and tell me shit. So, uh, Traveling that I'm used to doing I, I, is not available anymore. And what is available, I don't really need to do it because I've done all, I've done that my whole life. So being in one spot is so new to me still. It's bizarre. And I'm more upset about people taking this COVID thing so seriously and being afraid or complying to get along. Either way, you're hurting other people that know better. Because you're, uh, you're either not willing to stand up for yourself and take a beating, or what else could it be? You're morbidly ill. And if you are morbidly ill, why weren't you wearing a mask two years ago? Well, There's another question. If you are morbidly ill, what the fuck are you doing out in public? Why don't you, the morbidly ill, leave us healthy people the fuck alone? But no. <laughs> because uh, what is that thing called? We have rights, people. We got the right to do whatever we can get away with. <laughs> oh, yeah, life insurance policies. And yeah, I, I know. And it's such an easy time to get away with murder right now. 
because, you know, they're more interested in ticking the, the COVID check mark than solving a murder. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's so confusing because from one place to the other, the rules have changed. You know, today, my uh, food delivery fellow was of Lithuanian persuasion, but he spoke English. I speak English. He spoke English. He had no mask. And he was in probably 22, 23 years old. He's delivering food, having kind of a good time. How you doing today? One of those guys. Just nice. And he was just as disappointed in this COVID crap as me. He says, where he's from, they're using the COVID to control us. This is what he tells me, not what I told him. <laughs> and I thought, well, I must be on to something here. I got to be right about something once in a while or I, my head would explode. <laughs> so what did COVID accomplish? I think the divide and conquer uh, that they've always been trying to, to find, that was the goal. And uh, the COVID is the end result because you can carry this on for the rest of people's lives. Some people don't, don't know any better are going to believe the thing morphs off and you know, becomes something else because they play video games. They know how this shit works. Yeah. <laughs> I play video games. I, I know how this shit works too. Except that, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I've opened my ears to people like Larry Woods and, that I personally have you know spoken with. And then there's other people that, are just brilliant, like Alan Watts. He's dead now. But he was doing uh, recordings about philosophies and his versions, his input on religion back in, in when I was born, 1959. They found an old recording from then that he did himself. <laughs> but he got he got out there in the public eye and he was uh he was debating the best of the best and I guess the at the time, it didn't matter. There wasn't much of an audience, so there was nothing to silence. And oddly enough, you'd think that with the, the content, YouTube would be just dumping that shit left and right, but they promote it. So, what the fuck? We're, see, it's an information age, but we're not getting all the information. Some of us are. Not, not me, but some of us are. I'd sure like to know somebody that feels they're getting all of the information that they need to make a solid decision. Because I'm very limited. When I heard the you know, virus was going to get us, me and Mary were still doing radio, and it was uh, like February of last year. And I told her, no, nah, I don't think so, because I've been through this for about 30 years with viruses in different countries. In England, it was mad cow disease. And, and the weird part about it, of all these things, is you always read about them and you hear about them on the internet, the news, whatever have you. But when do you ever meet anybody that suffered from this big problem they're talking about? And if they did, how would you know? You know somebody told you. Well, <laughs> like Kate, <laughs> life insurance policies create motives for murder frequently. And... Wow, it's a lot easier to kill people than you think. You know, we watch too much TV. People are very dependent on weapons. Wow, there's way better ways. How would I, I think I would just bore somebody to death? <laughs> I tell them how the you know how Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492 and saved all those West Indies people from being murdered and robbed. <laughs> the truth about him is he, he never set foot on North American soil, as far as they can prove, but uh, he wasn't a good guy. And I got my own version of him anyway. Hmm. Too much crime and law online. Well, we're being encouraged by the people that make money to do these things. They, they cut everything off. Everything they could cut off, except their rich friends, they did. Everywhere, even here. When they went to, they, see, they fuck up in a small population. See, in a big population, you you can fool a lot more people and keep the story alive. In smaller places, uh, 
like South Dakota, for example. It's got less than a million population. And you know what Joe Biden did to punish that that Republican governor for being an outspoken member of society? Cut off the pipeline. Went, well, you won't be getting that pipeline that was going to increase your living conditions, make you eat every day. So they went, fuck you. Hmm. Let's see. The cop thug that killed George Floyd is the current case. Well, that's what I mean. You know, they have killed people every day. Uh, what difference does it make to me what color the victim is? I don't give a shit. I don't care if, you know, if, unless, and there's never any proof of this, unless somebody is physically doing something, I, I don't know. They've always got eight or ten cops on one guy. So, yeah, you surround me with eight cops and I'm going to act fucking stupid and panic and probably fight. Who wouldn't? Oh, yeah, the compliant. Yeah. See, they... Hmm. And, and besides, the guy wasn't... Who cares in the long run? The cops murder somebody. And then it's more important that what color the fucker was than the cops murder somebody. <laughs> they do it every fucking day. Why is this one guy so important? Because you were told he's important. Otherwise, you'd never know he would get free existed. In fact, without the internet, I don't do Danish TV or radio, so without the internet, I wouldn't even know about any of this shit. I've been gone a long time. I've been in Denmark uh, almost seven years. Uh, seven years? Yeah, seven years, something like that. I lose track without a pencil. Anyway, let's do the chat thing, because my notes were boring. But yeah, the current case. See, the current case. I... Remember when it was OJ? <laughs> I mean, it's it's always something. It doesn't matter. It's some reason or another when when the media gets a hold of of something they can uh, hmm, milk because it, things get boring after a while. You know, you need a little variety, and they don't. I don't. They don't impress me. Anyway, just a pick house you but. Just a pick house you like. Then plant your flag on their lawn and say, yeah. Well, you know what? I was walking down to get cigarettes today, and one of my neighbors is flying the big, the big, huge Danish flag. And they're, they're, they got laws about what flag goes up on what days. And these people have these huge uh, flagpoles in their front, front yard. <laughs> it's not, it's unbelievable. Anyway. If I wanted to commit suicide, I could go plant a flag, an American flag in my front yard, probably have the house burnt down by dark. I don't think uh, these people around me would appreciate it. So I don't do that. And they, they're just like Americans here. They, they love their flag. It's a battle flag. It's, bad, 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 bad. it's got a long story to it. King so-and-so and, -so and it was the first flag or some crap like that. It's real. It's a real in-depth story, but you know me in details. But yeah, I'm going to pick a house I like and do that. Grim. No, I already, I already got a house to live in. And I, if I didn't have a house to live in, the last thing I would ever do would probably be go invade somebody and, you know, by force take their shit. I'm not like that. And I don't, I don't feel as though I live amongst people who are like that. Most of the people around me are either uh, family people, they got kids, or they're old people like me. You know, They don't have time or energy to run around and, and change things. They're just trying to get through the fucking day they're in and you know, have a steak at night and watch some fucking TV. Life is um, predictable and simple. Uh, and besides that, the state took away all the fun. And except, oh, they're going to open the bars again. They're going to throw us a fucking bone. And now, the good side for me, spring came. And I like to sit outside the bar and, and the table with the you know canopy thing over if you don't want to sit in the sun. And sit my beer out on, out there and watch everybody passing by and you know see the kids and the girls and the old people. It's kind of nice. And they're going to punish me 
by, not allowing me in the bar to drink. I'm only going to be allowed to drink out on the patio because I don't have a COVID pass, whatever the fuck that's going to be. At least that's what's in the writing right now. But what I've seen Denmark do is go along with the narrative in the beginning, you know, because their prime minister is all pro-COVID here. She wants to control every fucking body. And now people are starting to ask questions because, you know, they're hearing things like, uh, well, after you get the, the inoculation, you're still going to have to do this and that and the other. Wait a minute. <laughs> no, we're going to what? And that stopped, that stopped her popularity right there. They're already planning to get rid of her. So, you know, if you want to, uh, she's probably rich from her, you know, participation in you know, pushing the masks and all these little added expenses that we were uh, given. Because I guess if you're poor, they give you a mask. I don't know. I wouldn't wear one anyway. And I've yet to have anybody try to force me you know, to wear one. I've, I'm not even sure if I've gotten dirty looks because I don't wear one. I, I look people right in the eye. They pass me by with their mask on, and I stare right in their eyes. And I'm sure the disappointment I have for what they're doing shows to some level. But I don't call them names, swing sticks at them, or push them, or nothing stupid. But it it really disappoints me personally as a human life form and as a carbon-based being. To watch my peers, people that are just alive like me, out there punishing themselves to get along. You know, even Cirque, <laughs> Cirque had to go to work, the, uh, to the office. They're, they're trying to bring that back, starting them out a day. You got to come in one day a week or something. And even Cirque doesn't want to be bothered with traveling on the train anymore because of this. It's so inconvenient. So her family doesn't live far from here. They live in Copenhagen. So her sister come and got her. Or her mom got her. Somebody got her. And the next night, she come home with another one. My sister brought her home. And that's, you know, the kind of tightness that I grew up with as far as family goes. My, we, we yelled and fought and argued. But nobody ever said, no, I ain't going to help you. That, that was insane. You know? We were uh, just loud and aggressive. But... Uh, the job always seemed to get done, whatever whatever was needed. And uh, see, there you go. I claim this house the name of BMFS. I'm not sure what BMFS. I got to go back and see that. Well, it's just funny how you know we all respond to symbolism. You know, whether it's a good response or not, symbolism will always get your attention. Gets mine, maybe not yours. But I would assume that the uh, the house that I passed by with the great big gigantic Danish flag today, probably military. I would assume that would you know why would somebody fly a flag? And usually the people that do it are either military, ex-military, relatives of military, something like that. Political people <laughs> they they grandstand, they put the flag on their coat on their lapel like it's some kind of decoration. And I think we, we get misleaded you know, by the, the people that claim leadership. Eh, disgusting word to use because they're just telling us what to do when they themselves don't do it. They pretend to do it. I've seen a few links of uh, famous people getting inoculations on, you know, where you can visually see what they're doing. And if the guy that I saw get one patted the wrong arm, the next day after he got the shot, and he pats the wrong arm that they shot on the video. He pats the other arm. Went, wow, that's kind of weird. I mean, I think I would know which arm took the needle. <laughs> I'm a sensitive little flower. You know what I mean? Well, ex okay. And there's there's that that, and we're from a bigger place. See, that's what the the lesson of living in America was for me to survive here was people, you know, they care to a point. And 
and there there is there is a line that's drawn somewhere and you just got to know which side of the line to stay on <laughs> because you don't want to get too involved with uh, disagreeing about people's flags rainbow flags oh yeah you, did i ever tell you guys i went to a rainbow gathering once in uh, santa fe I know I told the story on the dark tip. I feel like telling it again. It was such a bizarre situation. I had come back from uh, a trip to Europe somewhere. I think Scott, England. Uh, and I went to Tennessee. or Yeah, I went to visit somebody. And that flopped really badly. So I decided to take a trip. I'm going to hitchhike. going to go west. So I ended up in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, we're... I guess we're uh, 30, what interstate it was. Can't remember the number. 25 interstate goes to uh, Santa Fe. If I'm wrong, somebody could fix that. But the road that goes north to Santa Fe from Albuquerque, that's where I ended up. So I'm hitchhiking on that interstate, whatever road it was. Going north, didn't really care. And the kid that picks me up says, hey, I'm going to go by the uh, rainbow thing. You want to ride there? and You can hang there for a bit. And I said, what's that? <laughs> uh, how, I didn't know what he was even talking about. But I figured, what the fuck? You know, guy's not going to murder me in the woods or anything for crying out loud. He just gave me a ride somewhere. So I did. And he pulls into this place, and there's a few cars. And he says, now you follow the so-and-so. And, and I wandered in, and it just there was like hundreds of people there. And nobody asked me why I was there, what I was doing. It was, want some ganja cookies? <laughs> Did you eat today? Shit like that, you know. Do you have a tent to sleep in? Because it, uh, it was snowing on the ground. But I stayed a couple days. and just People would just hang around with me for bits. And after a couple days, I got the bug to go south again because it got cold. And, uh... Decided I'm going to hitchhike down to Albuquerque. And I just hit the freeway. And I see the police car. And here he comes. Police car's coming at me. And I went, oh, fuck. I hate this shit. And the cop gets out of his car and says, hey, where are you going? In an English accent. And I said, what? <laughs> he says, well, you, you're hitchhiking, right? I'm going to Albuquerque. Does that do you any good? Uh, I said, yeah, okay. He says, but now this is where I panic. He says, you got to sit in the back because insurance won't cover you. If I wreck the car and you're in the front, you're fucked. I said, okay. So I get in the back and he says, have you eaten? Do you have something to drink? He had sodas, and snacks he offered me. And he drove me like 80, 90 miles an hour from Santa Fe to Albuquerque. And, uh, just told me about how he ended up in America and decided to become uh, whatever kind of cop he was at the time, state trooper or something like that. <laughs> I did make I made a right in Albuquerque and I kept going I kept going west, but it was the weirdest encounter I ever had with a police in my whole life. You know, the cop was he could have done any fucking thing he wanted to, and instead of what. I had heard of or seen with my own eyes before. This guy did the exact opposite. He was friendly. He was helpful. When I got to the place, he says, I'll take you to the uh, Waffle House and give you a few bucks. Get yourself something to eat. He says, okay. <laughs> so here I, I've just ridden in this back of a police car doing like 80, 90 miles an hour. for. It wasn't a very long ride because it's pretty close couple of, I don't know, could have been an hour, hour and some, hour and a half maybe. Anyway, now I want to always remember that over all the bad, horrible shit the cops did or you know, I got involved in and the cops reacted to, that that guy didn't. You know, there's always somebody that will do the right thing. And I believe in my, you know, the way I think that I bring to me the things that I bring, whatever they are. I did something to bring it. And when I bring something good, which doesn't happen like that all the time, but it's it's rare, you know, but like with my buddy Magnus, I met him over a t-shirt that I was wearing because he recognized the t-shirt. 
And only cool people know Boondock Saints t-shirts. It was, and it was a dark, hard to read. So you had to know the film and the t-shirts to be that aware. And that's how that started. It kept running into him. And now, shit, now he's got a girlfriend that lives down the road. He, our neighbor <laughs> and him. <laughs> so he, he's now my neighbor. And uh, we get along great. And he's a guitar player, by the way, too. Thinks that, uh, I wanted to tell you this. He thinks that your blues show is really good because there's not a lot of blues shows out here. <laughs> and especially people that play the variety of blues that you play. His father is also a bass player. So he's, he's from a, you know musical people and his friends are all musical. So here we sit. This is what I mean. I'm in this world of lockdowns and masks and COVID and bullshit. But my life has consistently improved. My personal being life, not my internet life, that, that's up and down like a stock exchange. But my personal friendships with people has uh, it's stayed the same since uh, the, the whole duration of the last year and a half. If anything, it's gotten better. I think people that, because there's a, I call them the, the town council, the guys that drink down at the train station. And they drink, and they have their dogs there, and talk about the world affairs and whatever they're doing. And they're all friendly with me. And the ones that aren't, they're not rude. They just leave me be. And some of them like me to be there. So they, hey, how you doing today? And there's, we're losing the ability to uh, be nice to each other because life is just so fucking cruel, you know? And the reason I don't care about stuff is uh, I got enough to care about where I live, you know, to keep me busy for years without worrying about, you know, what's going on way over there. Now, but I'm American blooded and all that crap, speak English. And unfortunately, the only access to my home country is <laughs> I've settled for RLM because uh, what you call it, the big, the big platforms. I got off Facebook in 2014. I tried Twitter for a while and nah, I couldn't hang with Twitter, so I never use it. And uh, now I've got RLM. Which is a real small group of people that known them, you know, known each other for quite a period of time, for the most part, you know. And I came in with Mary when Mary uh, and Sir dumped the uh, World Truth site. But uh, personalities have um, people have been going ballistic lately. You know, the anger is so huge. Everybody wants to be angry, 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 angry. And that's because right now, I guess if you look around, life life sucks. It's hard to find something uh, pleasant, comfortable, good about what is going on. And uh, uh, I understand that. So, Christ. I've been staying off the radio because I really didn't know what to talk about. <laughs> Who are these people? The Black Keys, Crawling King Snake. I don't know who she's talking about. Who are these people? Ooh, I like to play with chat when I'm doing the radio, but I can't. I can't keep up. <laughs> can't do two things at one time. But uh, let's see. Oh, maybe we've just hit the end of the information age. You know, we have all the information that we ever needed way, way back, long before the internet ever came around. The problem was, is the people that are in control of things like medicine, politics, finance, they give us a bunch of shit to work with. And then when things go wrong, well, sue us. You know, <laughs> they got legal teams. They don't care. They got to keep the lawyers in you know, cars and houses, too. Uh, oh, yeah, but that's when I came. That's all I mean is, oh, who are the... Me and Graham, well, Grammy's been busy. Cirque's been doing a lot of art and working lately. And me, I don't, I don't know what to say to anybody anymore, except Beetle. You know, me and Beetle just 
clown around a little bit and try to make the best of a bad situation, you know, because horrible things are happening in the world. That is a given. Do you participate in it or not? That that in itself, to some level, must be a choice. Yeah, because I was a pirate for a long time, and I did not live in fear. Fear of anything. I didn't give a shit about fucking nothing. And here I am, married and you know, responsible and all this stuff. And I, I still don't feel... Uh, I don't feel like I'm living in fear. I'm living in other people's fear. <laughs> that's, that's the sadness that I get. You know, when I see a masked up face, I think, wow, oh, makes me sad, like a little dork, you know, oh. So, I don't know. It, it seems, people call it uppity, but I'm not afraid to go. You know, something's going to kill me. That's what life is about. You know, our fear of it happening won't change. Well, I think if you live in the fear, it promotes it. You know, if you're living doom and oh everything sucks and what a horrible world and life and that and that and that and that, well of course that's what I would have. So on the radio, you know, on a global scale, yeah, it's horrible. There's lots of things going on out there that shouldn't happen, and there's lots of people doing them that should be silenced. But the people who are being silenced are the opposition to the lies. <laughs> How do you fight a thing like that? They call they call the truth misinformation on on the news. I uh, got this. Uh, YouTube is real. It's either I know what I need to look for and type it in the, the thing, or they give me shit to open. And the only shit they've been giving me for months is from Australia, down under where I don't live. You know, but. The things that they're talking about and that they've done and how they're living in quarantines and lockdowns and oh man, I just uh, I it never went that far where I exist. Now far from here it did. So how deeply involved do I want to be in this global crisis when I'm not crisis? Hmm. I don't feel crisis. Kate, do you feel crisis? I don't know. It see, it's easy to. You know, oh, thanks, Circle. I got the elixir from the wife. Oh, this is such a great door table for me. I know I'm not saying anything important today, or just breaking back in trying to do a podcast. I I don't know. I've been quiet for a long time on the radio, and I think it's because uh, there's really not much uh, you can do. As one individual, you know, the individual is dead. We have been slapped about and beaten down. And if you don't have a big group and followers and all, nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, who are these people? No, no, I don't. Ooh. Oh, she must not be talking to me. Uh, anyway, uh, so I think that the. Dr. Felchi suffers from premature calculations, if you know what I mean. <laughs> because every time I see the guy, he's saying the opposite of what he said the last time I saw him. Now, I don't know how that... Okay, yeah, the, you don't feel right. I See, I need to hit this pipe again because I'm not... <laughs> I'm forgetting what I said. <laughs> Good. I am glad... That there is somewhere, some, see, some of us know better, and it's it's not us that suffer, it's watching other people suffer that bothers us. It, it's very difficult, it's, it's not easily expressed verbally. Um, yeah, well, oh yeah, everybody should, it should be a law. Hey, there's Sir Blue. Uh Oh yeah, that's a whole nother story, but these things are all out of the past, you know, but what brought me here was Cirque and, and Grammy. And what kept me here <clears throat> all this time was the big platforms are garbage. I mean, 
fuck. They want to control every fucking thing you do. That's why when Rob thought he was being funny, why it hurt boo. That was a slap. That was like being kicked in the balls, booted off. I went, holy fuck. What the fuck did I do to you? Okay, so I take these kind of things, you know, uh, being abandoned. Not what you say to me on the chat. I can ignore that. I can put an Iggy thing under under your name. Boom, you're gone. Don't have to read your crap. Don't care about your crap. Should have did it yesterday with Anti, but I didn't. And I thought that what he was doing was just being purposely antagonizing Beetle and picking and scat. You know, he, he like just kept saying uh, the most ridiculous crap. No matter what Beetle would ask him, he would answer back in insane shit. And at some point, it was like, you know, hey, nobody deserves to be treated like that. Period. And uh, I guess the admin on, on at the time saw fit to give him a little time out. You know? And I'm not against, I don't know, maybe I am to a degree, but I'm not against it at that level. When somebody is just there, their only purpose to be there is to tell you you're a fucking idiot. Why are they there? You know? <laughs> so, uh, now normally I just throw an Iggy on his little box and I don't read what he says. And yesterday was different. You know, I live day to day, do what I want that day. I don't, kind of, I don't really do things that in any kind of fashion order. I do it on Tuesday, and except for radios, radio podcasts. Everything else is just whenever I feel like it. That could be my last uh, expression of freedom, you know, to uh, not react to people if I don't feel like it, you know, not answer to your question if I don't want to answer it because it was not a good, it was really a dumb question in the first place. And then we've got, uh, you know, uh, we have a fair amount of people that abide by the law, you know, believe that the Supreme Court is going to save them and this kind of crap. Or they believe that, like, they can go in there armed with the right information and they're going to fight and win. Well, how? It's a rigged game. You know that going through the door. You're in somebody else's house. You're a guest. <laughs> you're not even a guest. You're a prisoner. They have no problem putting handcuffs on you and throwing you in a cage if you get out of line. And getting out of line could be anything. It's all up to the judge's discretion. And depending on you know, say the guy didn't get any the night before. He goes to work in a bad mood. and You didn't do what they're accusing you of, but he's in a bad mood. The judge can say, the, the jury can find you innocent and the judge can overturn it. And then, if you want to fight that again, there's more court. So, so what is what is the point of any of that you know willing participation in an admiralty court to me is like sticking my balls in the fucking blender and then daring somebody to hit the button you know somebody's going to hit the button if you dare them to so don't do it but yet we we have people that believe and to their core, that if you are armed properly in this fight, well, then you can win it. And I think that it's a big fucking scam, all of it. Nothing is going to ever change until people say no collectively. But we don't. We say no individually. That's, And we have a lot of misunderstandings about things people have done said, blah, blah, over the years. Now, one of my claims to fame was in the late 80s, I found out that uh, driving is not what I thought it was. I went, what? Okay, so we've been through all that. But what I never mentioned to say was this. I never drove an illegal car. I drove a legal car illegally because I refused to go to the DMV and beg for permission. And I think I thought at the time, well, if they stop me and they want to fuck me around, that's just the way it's going to be. I don't fear it. I don't think it's going to happen. And I drove until 2011 
unlicensed. And the times that I got stopped were in the very beginning in Tennessee and uh, San Francisco. And the way you deal with that is you let the damn ticket go and just don't go back to the town where you got the ticket. They will never come looking for you for a fucking, you know, uh, driving without a, a license ticket. Well, these are old cases, too. This is, goes back to the 90s and, this, and the 80s, late 80s and early 90s. Once I, I got my, you know, my, my feel for this, driving without a license thing, it went a lot better. <laughs> Never got pulled over again. <laughs> but that's me. And I did not... I didn't live the traditional life um, forever. My it was so sporadic. I'd be married. I was married. This is my third fucking marriage in you know, what's it been? However many years. I've got uh, two children. Anyway, I think I've just learned how to avoid the man in my mind, and my mind kind of. Uh, I believe it because I believe it. It didn't happen. You know, if you make yourself a target, they'll, they'll smell it. The cops know. And I was going, in fact, I was going to a court hearing one morning. This is the last time that the cops, you know, I wasn't driving. I was a passenger in the car, but I'm going to court. And the cops, the girl that's driving was getting lost in the area where the court was. The cops thought she was prowling. So they pull us over, and the cop on the side I'm I'm on the passenger side is pointing a loaded gun at me, shaking. His hands was shaking, and I was thinking I was going to die. I thought, well, this is a fucked up way to go out of the world, but I, you know, nice knowing you, motherfuckers. And it, all of a sudden, everything stopped. They must have had the wrong car or some bullshit like that, and they let us go. And I was telling the guy, I have. A court appointment, man. What are you doing? You're going to make me late to court. The judge is going to fuck me. Uh, anyway, that didn't help. They still held us until they were sure we weren't whoever they were looking for. And uh, I made it to court in time. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Something I did, being in that car with a girl that didn't know where the fuck she was driving to, brought on the interest in what are you guys looking for from the police and there you go so i guess what i'm trying to get to the meat of this is my intentions and my actions dictate my results so when i'm already you know having to go to court you're already in that negative shit right there uh, i got to go through the court and the judge and uh, and then you bring the cops on top of you because they know. <laughs> they smell fear and they pounce on it. They're armed and they like to show you their weapons. They show, hey, see this gun? <laughs> oh boy. Now see things like that I don't miss. Here in Denmark they don't they don't carry weapons like that. They have them. And they raided Freetown and fuck Freetown all the shit. But they left off everybody else alone, all the good citizens, you know, see, we're in a divide and conquer right now, and everybody's distracted by the COVID, <laughs> so whatever really is happening, you know, we're not, we're not even close to knowing what it is, oh, and then what's his name, the Prince of England died, when he, him, my brother died in some good company, the Prince of England, somebody else died the other day, who was it, I uh, can't think of his name, oh, well, Died at 82 years. I remember the age, but not the name. Anyway, but there's been, uh, this week, it's been like three, four major people, well, three major people and then my brother. And at first I thought it was him being a practical joker on the RLM. And then when I realized it wasn't him, it was his girlfriend, I went, holy shit, fucker's dead. And who, you know, what do you do? Feel bad about it? Uh I don't know. I don't know what to feel. I haven't, uh, I haven't got a real good grip on the life and death uh, drama. I just know that eventually it's going to happen, and it's part of the cycle. 
and there you go. And in the middle, you do what you do. And you, there's no good and bad to life. People you know, live by that. They, they think that. But if there was a good and a bad to life, then why would all the shitty people that are fucking us be getting all the good stuff? And all the little people that don't want to hurt anyone, they're all scrounging around you know, for crumbs off the big table. So now things are, are all backwards and we're all being treated like a bunch of idiots. Well, yeah, true. I'm just not verbally uh, emotional. My mom passed three years ago. I think 18, 17, I think it was 18. J- uh, January 1st, I heard about it. I, and see, in my mind, I'm still like... I connected to my mom somehow. In my mind, I'm still connected to that idiot brother of mine. You know, um, <laughs> there, there's just, they're not explainable emotions for me. I don't know how to talk about them, really. They're just, they're there. But they're neither good nor bad. They're like, uh, I'm carrying what's left of them on with me while I live. You know, their, their body is gone, but in my mind, there's, I, 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 I guess it just sounds insane because we're all different. You know, we see things. But point taken, I feel something, but explaining it or expressing it, wow, that that's a little dip, difficult. But it's all connected. Yes, indeed. I agree with that. Um, so, but I don't know. I, I think it's... Uh, it's so subliminal. You know, there's so much going on in my brain all the fucking time, right? And I grew up with all that crap. You only use 10% of your brain. Okay, well, what runs everything else? <laughs> you know, all, the, all that crap I'm not consciously operating, how does it work? You know, if it's not my brain making it work, is it aliens? No, it's the government. The government is proof. Protecting you from aliens to stop you from... I mean, here we go. Just more... The stories that we fucking believe are so stupid. Yet, people make the stupidest things in life work. Like money. Good Lord. I I don't know what to say about money. I think this money thing's been long over for a long time. And they're just... uh, They're using the COVID as a distraction you know, as a way to explain things that if they would have happened any other way, it would have brought, ooh, excuse me, the coffee brought me up. It would have brought violence, beyond the violence that there is. I had this staged violence, controlled. I saw the, man, there was more cops than there were protesters in the video link I saw from uh, this new, whatever, what do they call it? New protesting in Minnesota. And the cops looked like, 10 deep and the width of the street. So, and are, you know, with their batons and their things, or what do you call those shields and helmets? What the fuck is going on? I mean, who, who in their right mind willingly goes out in public, take on the police? What the fuck is the goal of that? They're they're supposed to be begging the government for something. I don't know what they're begging for here, but protesting is begging to me. Oh, oh, please, Mr. Politician, can I please go to the bar? I'll be a good little fellow, I promise. Of course, uh, (laughs) I'm not going to be a good little fellow when I get there. (laughs) But (laughs) that's the nature. See, and here we go in this loop, right? They get rid of something because of this bullshit story. And then they bring it back a couple of months later and with restrictions. Okay. Now, what are restrictions? Regulations? Same thing, right, Grim? Wouldn't you say restrictions and regulations are similar in fashion? You know, you can do one or the other, but pretty much the same. But I'll be able to be, sit out on the you know, the street in a chair at a table this coming up Wednesday, if I choose. Hmm. And sip my beer and watch the Danes be Danes. 
so they're you know my privilege this is what pisses me off not that hmm, I'm having trouble kind of getting this across but it's I want to be able to to do what I want to do not what I'm allowed to do you know I fought that my whole life well you're not allowed to do that well watch me <laughs> I show you and I did and I got away with doing it over and over and over now there's nothing to do. Now I'm an old guy now. I'm all retired in my little co you know, cozy little home with my little cozy wife and my little cozy dog and cat. And it sounds like uh creative writing one oh one because the world's on fucking fire. <laughs> Even Denmark is on fire at some level, but the smaller area that you live in, the less of that shit you get to you have to encounter. Yeah, because I go mad just walking to the train, and I force myself every time to go on. There's two ways to walk, and I go on the way where I'm forced to look at the people in the masks, because oh man, I don't know why I do it exactly, but I think it's because I've got to see. I'm waiting for when it's over. I'm not going to listen to the radio and go, and they're going to tell me. I'm going to walk out there one day. <laughs> and but deep down inside I know that the state is going to keep this monster going forever. You know, whether it's mandatory or not isn't going to matter. They have instilled the fear. Now they've got this uh, variance. Well, there's the new catchword. Variance of the COVID virus epidemic thing baba jig, according to Fauci. And you know, so now they've got this thing mutating and doing somersaults, jumping off trains. It's a very active little virus. It does a lot. It has many talents. Now, I just don't understand where all the other viruses that we deal with every day went to. They're still there. I mean, crying out loud. I've got dirt on my hands right now because I was out in the yard playing with some of the uh, overgrowth that we have. Time to sun came out. Time to go cut it down before spring really gets good, and it triples. Because <laughs> when it grows, it grows. You know. And then we got that cold winter. You got a winter, you know. I didn't know. I grew up without a winter. We grew shit all the year. It was L.A. hot, hot. Even their cold compared to other places, their cold is still hot. <laughs> or it was when I was lived. This this is back in the sixties. And it's not the same as, if I've been back, let's see, when did I go back? I visited my home, the home I grew up in. I didn't visit it, but I, I went to go see it because it had been bought, bought over, people moved in and whatnot. But my old neighborhood. And most of the people I grew up with had moved on and their parents were dead and the houses had all been sold to other people. And that was in the 90s. So, and some of the friends of mine that I had were doing time, couldn't be reached, unless you want to go visit them in prison. And I don't visit anybody in prison. If you got yourself to fucking prison, what the fuck do you need a visitor for? What difference is that going to make? Still going to have to do your time. So I think visiting people in prison is just a, this is a tease. It's a horrible way to uh, get the better of somebody that's already down. Hey, let's let them look at their wife through a piece of glass for 20 minutes. Then tell them they got to go away. <laughs> because you're in jail, buddy. Yeah, we've got to... Um, here, is not a, it's not a police state in the sense of the cops uh, are evil. And I'm sure... There are cops here that aren't evil. But the ones that are on the street a couple years back got training because people were complaining about how they were being treated by the cops. So <laughs> to combat that, then the cops had to go through some changes to learn how to get along with people. And as long as you stay out of the bigger cities, uh, I believe that works. It works here. Uh, there's another town about 20 miles away. They do have cops. And 
I don't, there's no real uh, news flashes about murders and crap like that because there's cops there, and it's not. Uh, the cops here don't seem to bring on more trouble than they already need, and they're not really overworked anyway. They they create shit like drug busts for these guys to do. But now that they, well, I guess uh, Freetown reopened again. To where people can go in <coughs> again and buy your products from <coughs> vendors. <coughs> Merchants and such. Hold on. <coughs> Give me a minute. One minute. Wow, that was good. <coughs> I got a little bit of a throat thing going on. You know, spring makes your nose run and gives you a little cough if you smoke. All these, um, what, those are the symptoms, right, of the world's most deadly pandemic ever to hit mankind. It was something so you know, everybody does. You know? Who doesn't need, especially a smoker? If you're a smoker, you know what I'm talking about. Your sinuses get a little disturbed from the smoking. So blowing your nose is just something or clearing your throat is a byproduct of our bad habit of smoking. But they've turned that into, if you get around somebody else and you don't have a mask and you cough, you are a murderer. Or could be, would be, want to be murderer. Because you could be carrying the Rona. That's right. I probably do. I don't give a fuck. It's the flu, Grim. It's not anything I'm scared of. Good God. If I, I've probably had it my whole life, it's in my DNA. When I read the DNA thing, it said Corona something, or, or not Corona. Yeah, cor- something in there that was related to either the Corona or the COVID. This crap that we're regurgitating is all the shit from the state. It's all nonsense. It's make believe. Man, I'm going to probably die of old age. Start feeding me with a fucking shovel or something. <laughs> you want some soup, Lou? Splash. <laughs> you know, but... No, I, I I don't see getting... Getting killed by a cold is... Jeez. Ah. All right, I'm, I don't know how long... I, I think I've been on a little bit more than an hour. Let me do... I'll try to do a up to the hour, and that'll do the rant. But, oh, I miss doing the radio with Miss Mary so much because she made me laugh. And what I've been doing through these last three radio-free months is a lot of Internet and especially a lot of uh, reruns off the, uh, R, uh, the RLM radio, the live radio. And there's a, a few people on there. We don't have a lot of variety, but... The people that we do have on the Real Liberty Media that do radio are consistent. You know, if they say it, they seem to believe it or mean it, even if they're uh, disagreeable or not. Eh, eh, eh. It's the point is fucking like I heard. Uh, what the hell, I heard a story about goats on the uh, redneck dentist thing. Ah, eh, didn't really. But the freedom to tell that fucking story is so valuable. It's way more valuable than uh, anybody can probably imagine because it's not, it's, it wouldn't be welcomed. And people wouldn't want to hear it. It's something you find out. Learning is finding out stuff you don't know. And finding out stuff you don't know when you hear it is sometimes unpleasant. And when you hear the same story two times in a row, well, to me, that kind of lets me know, wow, the guy says it pretty close to Because you're not going to tell it the same exact way, but the, the concept is going to be there. Now, I learned a lot of shit about goats I didn't want to know. But what I think is important is he's got a platform and the freedom to speak about it when other people wouldn't allow, you know, they wouldn't allow it. It would be shunned because uh, whatever reason. Oh, Here we go. Something else I wanted to mention. That I was going on about South Dakota because there were people talking about, hey, I don't like this anymore. I want to live somewhere else. 
Okay, well, there is one place where if you go there, they're welcoming people. And they don't have all the corona shit to go along with it. But what they do have is that fucking religious right that runs that state. So no matter what, you're either locked down in a, uh, in a totalitarianism or you're free in a totalitarianism light, you know, because God loves you. I don't think it's any different in the long run, but not being forced to do something that everybody else is being forced to do, it's, it's got to be a step. It'd be a step up to me. If I was shopping, that I would be looking for a, a, a place with the least resistance. Like moving to New York right now, I went to New York in 1986 on a fluke. Don't even know really why, how, it just kind of happened. And I ended up staying there for almost a year. But uh, I wouldn't go now. There is nothing appealing to me about living in a major metropolis. And I lived in a lot of... I had more fun in the city than... uh, It's probably not fair to to talk about it because now the cities are all shit. You know, even here, she went to the city the other day and uh, there's no... The bars weren't open yet, so... People can't freely associate. If you do want to go to a bar, I think you got to have a COVID pass or proof that you've been tested or some shit like that. <laughs> well, okay, Grimner, that exactly. Now, that's what I mean is I read stuff, and but my memories of New York are way different than the crap that I've seen. You know, and of course it was uh, how many years ago? 1986. Woo, 30, 34 years. And in 34 years, you know, change. Now, I've been here where I'm living for six, and almost nothing has changed except this uh, compliance to the corona crap. But once the, the population is starting to really figure it out, I've talked to more than one person in English from here that has told me, nah, this is a bunch of shit. So... Whether it is a bunch of shit or not is is that some part of me I always my vibration I always seek out people that are like me, <laughs> you know. And we agree about the weirdest shit. Like there's no such thing as a COVID test. What they test all the time? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't believe me if I told you what they're really doing. Why can't they just take a saliva sample? Why do they got to shove something up your fucking nose so far they're scratching the back of your head? Because they're putting something in you. Common sense. Do the math. Why do you need to insert something into a human body? To pull something out? Well, like what? Oh, snot. Okay, here, let me blow my nose. No, no, that won't do it. Why not? You're looking for a flu problem, right? (laughs) Now, that's the stupid man's way of saying it, because I'm just a stupid guy in the world, right? But even I know that. If somebody wants to put something inside me, there's a price to be paid for it. Yes, I have done drugs, willingly. No, willing participation. And then, I have done drugs because the doctor told me it was for my benefit. And let me tell you something, folks. I've harped on this for many years now. That was a big fucking lie. And for people that don't know, Big Pharma is poison. It's drug addiction in its purest form. I mean, wow. If you want to meet a drug addict, go find somebody that's dependent on Big Pharma. You know, It's like us uh, internet junkies. We're, we're dependent on the electricity and the the internet to be up and people to be around to post shit. It's as interactive. There's lots of shit to go on. But a doctor, you see one guy and he tells you something and then you go do it. And wow, when I hit that wall and found out what they were doing to me, I thought at the time it was better to risk death than to secure a bad kidney or whatever they were damaging with their pills. And they were damaging it with the pills That's why they wanted to test my blood to see how much damage I'd suffered as a result of taking the fucking pills. 
So my sick little mind said, wait a minute. Oh, I have to go to the bathroom now. Okay, I'll be right back. And then I left. And that was the end of that. And here I am, nine and a half years later. And the only proof I have, of course, is my word against everybody else. So I'm not recommending to anybody else that they do this. I am saying it can be done if you really know what you're doing, I suppose. Because I'm like five foot four. I weigh 130 pounds. And I do not understand how I could have got high blood pressure. That doesn't make any sense. And I think what happened is they know how to test you at certain you know, certain times when they've, you've been waiting and you're anxious and this and that and the other. And then they know what to say or how long to make you wait. So that by the time they test your pressure, it's already high because you're pissed off from waiting for the fucker. Yeah. But that's just my opinion. Anyway. Whatever medicines that uh, I want to be on, the ones I want to be on, they don't want me on. <laughs> All that, you know, you got to have a, you got to have permission from a stranger to put poison in your body in the first place. So why don't you just cut the guy out and, and just figure it out yourself and find out the food that you need to eat. <laughs> we've been fucked so badly because the diet you know they put all this garbage in the air the water the food that we live on for so long then when you finally get sick from doing it you go what the fuck how come i'm sick because of what you ate now not a lot of people are going to believe that it's true to me i think it's true um oh. You are what you eat, <laughs> not necessarily what you expel, you know. My ideas and my words sometimes uh, come across, and sometimes they even confuse me, because they're ideas of, of mine. I don't repeat what Fauci says. I don't give a fuck what Fauci says. And Denmark has its own Fauci. They're trying to dump that idiot, whoever it is. Cirque was telling me about it two weeks, three weeks ago. So there's a certain amount of sanity left in the world, you know. Not much. And maybe the RLM isn't the... Uh, it's not an... You can't look at it from a perspective and that we can all share. It's all individual. And from looking at it, I would assume it looks chaotic and random and bizarre. But depending on, you know, what we're discussing at any given time. Because there's five conversations going on sometimes. Somebody's commenting to somebody that commented four lines before and just got to be familiar enough with who talks to who now. And, uh, wow. Because, uh, I don't know. I'm interpreted as being rude and cruel and stuff like that. And I think it's just uh, my inability to be uh, overly concerned with, with problems that don't concern me, you know. Uh, it's, it's cold and it's callous to the verbal world. Oh, the Queen of England is all alone. Fuck the Queen of England. Who gives a shit? But you prick, her husband just died. The bastard was 99 fucking years old. He was going to eventually. What difference does it make? Is your life different because somebody you didn't even know died? Really? You want to tell me how? <clears throat> and yet, when I lived in England, even the poor people I lived among loved their fucking royal family. And I could never understand why. My mother was the uh, same way. Loved her queen and all that crap. And I was like, oh, hey, babe, what the fuck are you thinking? But, you know, what do you say to your mom? <laughs> Outside of, hey, whatever floats your boat. Because that's as far as I could ever get away with and still be able to talk to her about it. You know? Couldn't tell her the complete truth. You know, there's times where the complete truth about my input, it just really fucks me up with other people. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was Bernie Madoff, 82 years old. Yeah, he died the other day. So in one week, 
the, the Prince, Bernie Madoff, and my brother. So I thought, wow, he's in good company with people like that. Because that's the kind of person I saw him as. You know, uh, he took advantage of shit. He didn't, he wasn't in love with people. Let's just say that. He was in love with stuff. He liked to have stuff. Drive nice cars. Big houses. Shit like that. Be in control. Move people around. You know, oh, you live where? Here, let me move you to this place for a while. You know, and and doing these uh, ostentatious acts of generosity and showing off. Oh, look what I got. Look how much money I'm worth. Ah, Well, I don't... I. I was in love with that shit until I was about 27 and 28 or so. And then I just eh, decided to be a pirate. I said, fuck it. It ain't worth it. And I've retired. I'm a retired pirate, folks. I do not pirate anymore. And uh, Cirk does not want me to pirate. She says, no, no, no. You must behave within the confines of your you know, legally provided freedom. <laughs> so... The hypocrite that I am, to be married to my wife, I follow the guidelines of the society that she wants to live in, because she won't go to America. I don't even want to go there, but I'm just saying, that was one of the first things that I learned about her, was she had no intention of ever moving out of this country. And as it turns out, because of the COVID crap, everything went our way. I mean, it's, it's just fucked. It, so many people are fucked up over it. And every fucking time I turn around, they sh- they shit on all the people. But, hey, look what I got out of that. That's not right. <laughs> but it happened. What do you do? Yeah. Do you go, oh, no, I'm, I'm a decent human being. I don't want to take advantage of everything. Of course not. You're going to take advantage of what is made available to you. That's what people do. Some people go too far with it, and I think the the opportunist aspect of the COVID has just been a, a product of uh, circumstance. If Cirque lived in the city, they would still have gone the internet route. It wouldn't have changed. See, things went the way they went. But because now she lives out here instead of commuting, there you go. So she works from a upstairs office in the house, and... It's just, it's weird to uh, live like this. I've never, <laughs> I've never experienced anything close to what I'm physically going through as I read the misery of other fucking countries and the, the shit that their politicians are doing to them. And as soon as the politicians here try to jump on that bandwagon, then they get a herd of people that go, oh, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And then they don't. They say they will. They've said a lot of things that they've backpedaled on and taken. Okay, we're not going to do that. And then they are doing, uh, I don't know if it's mandatory. They're doing inoculations. But, aye, aye, aye. It's as a, see, it's blackmail. If you want to keep your job, if you work in, you know, in the public, because that's what people do is work with other people. If you want to keep your fucking job, you got to get shots. Wow. Okay. Now, I'm against all that, but that's me. So, because I'm a guest here, I'm not on their dole, I'm not on their payrolls, I don't do any of their traditional shit, uh, nobody gives a fuck. Now, on the other hand, things could turn and, I don't know, we could go all Australia tomorrow, as far as I know. But I doubt it. You know, I'm just saying, I'm prepared for the horrible worst. Yet, here we are. Hey, Beetle, you old bastard, how the fuck are you? I see Beetle in the chat. I decided to do a rant for no particular reason about every stupid idea that came to me today on the door table. Because I like to do the radio. I just like to do the radio more with uh, other folks. It's... uh, it's easier for me. But, being as I got the radio, let me see if I don't have something interesting to bring up. And 
Oh, yeah, the last couple of weeks. You remember the other day when I was, let's scare the shit out of the living. You know? That is, uh, that's how they do it. See? And to get me into fear, the way they do it is through other people. And it's not a selfishness fear. It's a, oh, you poor bastard. You're so, you know, you're so tied to this system. You got to do that. Or you're so morbidly ill that you're afraid if I cough in your face, you're going to die. Wow, you're mental. So I got those two choices. It's not limited. And it kind of frees me from hating everybody. But my God, how long does it take people to realize that two weeks is not fucking a year and a half? What, what the hell? This is what they said. They said two fucking weeks. And what anybody with a brain should know that when a government says two weeks, they mean forever. It will never change back. And if it does change back, it'll have, you know, restrictions. You'll have to beg somebody to do this and that. And I'm not a I'm not good with begging. Ooh. Fuck, I hate begging people. I don't I don't remember the maybe my wife. What did I beg you for, honey? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um nothing. I can't think of the last time I begged. When I was in trouble, I didn't beg, oh, God save me. What I said was, wow, this is a shitty fucking way to go out of the world. Bye, everybody. And then I started running. And uh, the shots missed, so hmm, here I am. But that, too, was that was a hitchhiking story that it's not fit for radio. But I told the end. You know, I didn't tell you the, the whole story. Uh but like I said, once upon a time, I, I lived outside of the law, you know, outside of it. Not, you don't have to steal and rob and all that crap to live outside of the fucking law, but that's what people assume, you know. What I think I was uh, really good at was selling ideas to other people that would make money. But I'd prove to them that it would work first, and then I'd sell it to them. Go, ah, okay, now it's yours. Give me so much money. Cash money on the barrel, no records, no nothing. Just, hey, you take credit for the idea and I'm gone. See you next year. As, you know, that as an example. Um, <laughs> how do you sell ideas? Well, we got sold to COVID. The COVID has never been anything more than a fucking idea. It's never been a reality. And if it is a reality, it's a virus that gives you the flu. And if you're not morbidly ill, so fucking what? They just left out the important parts of that sentence. And what they've done is they've convinced people that there are, if you get it, you're going to drop dead. Now, okay, in 15 months, how does this thing still survive out there that it didn't just die off by itself? I mean, it's a long time for... Um, it's dead tissue, isn't it? If it was living tissue, it would be infectious. But dead tissue out in the atmosphere, what? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand all this shit. It's a viral ad campaign for Big Pharma, says Circle. Right, but see, I go with my, how I feel. See, I'm subjective. Objection, objective would probably be more interested in the, uh, the information available to them. And from the beginning of this thing, I never really felt I needed the information. I needed the remembering the time they did it before this. <laughs> this is a rerun. I've seen this movie before. Where was it? Oh, what is this? And it took me a couple of weeks. I wasn't the fastest fucking guy in the world, but my wife did ask me in the beginning, and go, well, let's give this a few, you know, don't be so quick to judge, because right away I was going, ah, fuck, we're being fucked. But she talked me into, you know, slow down and take a look. And I did. It took me about two or three weeks, and I said, fuck this. This is a scam. And two or three weeks ago, I go to town. Finally went back into town. I took a hiatus off that. Hadn't been into town in months. And the first thing that catches my eye is there's this uh, big building that you pass through to go to town. And there's big COVID banners from uh, hanging off the fucking top. Must have been 20 feet long. 
big, huge COVID testing. They had like, I don't know, eight or 10 people six feet apart waiting for their turn to go get tested. And I felt like shit when I saw that. Okay. Went back two weeks later and the big banners were all gone. And Cirque told me this and I, I was like crushed when I first saw it. She said, it'll, it'll go away. Relax. I go back two weeks later. The big banners are gone. It's down to a sign about as tall as me with a you know, square at the top of it, COVID testing, about two feet wide, two feet, maybe maybe a rectangle. It could have been three feet by two, something like that. But from a big banner to a little sign, and there was two people there, one in the parking lot coming and one standing waiting to get in. So it's losing its appeal slowly. But the people that run this crap, they're way the fuck ahead of us. So they've got a plan for when this dies down, people are going to be expecting freedom and all that shit. Well, they're going to be sadly surprised because they're going to find another excuse for why they can't do it. And to me, I think what proves that, they printed... What, how many? Four fucking trillion dollars? <laughs> Six? I don't know. This year? It, it's insane. I, I read in the last uh, eight months, they've printed 20% of all the money that's ever been printed since the uh, Federal Reserve Bank started in 1913. So, there's things going on behind. It's a collapsed system. And they're still pretending it works. I don't know how they pull this off. <clears throat> I saw Joe Biden militarily take over the United States. That was a coup d'etat. And, okay, everybody's cool with it. So what? Now, I thought it was America that was against military coup d'etats. The United States is always going around the world saving other countries from coup d'etats. till it's their own. And then, well, it's always been like this. What's the fucking difference? So, I think that's what uh, COVID was meant to do. What, it, what did COVID accomplish was the standards of living that each person is willing to tolerate is a direct result of the COVID. And they've got it global. As At least they tell us this. It's in all, you know, the... Lithuanian guy told me, and where he's from, it's really bad. They're trying to control us. Where does he go? He came to Denmark, to, and he's a delivery driver making money. So there's work to be had for the working man, and people are still civilized to each other when they, you know, the, the masked ones, not so much. But if people don't have a mask and you recognize them, or you just no, don't recognize them, and say, hey, they'll say, hey, back to you. The masked people, no, they, you don't know what's going to happen. There's no consistency to it. It's very, uh, but the look in their eyes is, um, devastates me. <laughs> Ain't called the great Satan for nothing. No shit, Java. Yeah, well, it's not just. See, that's the illusion, is that it's all one country. It's not. They're, these fuckers, they sit at a big table, all their politicians, and they sit at a big table with each other, smoking cigars and eating food. And then they have all their young kids go off and kill each other for them. But they sit at a big table and talk to each other. What the fuck? Why don't they fight and leave the kids alone? And when you look at, yeah, fear is control, right? But how do you get out of living in some form of fear? It's I'm, I'm afraid of being sucked into this fucking COVID belief crap, I guess, because I'm not, I don't believe any of it. I think it's exaggerations on reality. There are things about it that are true, but they're misrepresented to people that don't know how to read. Or maybe that don't have the interest. I don't know what it is. All the knowledge is available to you. No, no, no. It was given up. There was no resistance. South Dakota didn't go along with none of this. 
How come one state out of 50 didn't? This is where I'm comp- I tried to talk about it. I made jokes the other day. Moved to South Dakota. I put links up. Hey, check this shit out. Why is their place this way? And where you live, it's that way. What United States, COVID, what? <laughs> so, I guess it leaves me to believe one of two things. Either there is no COVID, or what COVID truly is hasn't happened yet. <laughs> this is like a, a preliminary. They, I, I talked about this with Mary, and what I thought was, this is a drill. A worldwide drill, but they're, they, they got away with more than they ever expected through compliance, right? And they were planning to do it for two weeks. And it was so easy to do for two. Let's, let's try this. Hey, let's try that. But South Dakota didn't. So if your government is pushing this COVID shit down your throat, why isn't why isn't there resistance? And I don't mean this bullshit with these fucking idiot protesters out burning shit and fighting cops. That's stupid. That's the 90s. Things are things have changed. They've got weapons that will make your guns obsolete. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Water cannons. <laughs> I mean, good God. Oh, what what they've got available? When, what if, what if they went and used the piss tanks on you? Then what do you do? Because that's what they do in Israel. Well, not Israel. They do it in uh, Palestine. The Israelis do. They they use tanks to spray urine on their their victims. Well, see, I don't think of you guys as USA. I think of you guys as you guys. You just live in the USA. It's not your fault. It it's a byproduct, you know. It once was a status. I used it as a status. I got praised for fucking years traveling. Oh, you're from America. Wow, nice to meet you, my friend. Why not taco? You know, shit like that. It was never, oh, you fucking American. Why don't you go jump off the bridge? Save us a bullet. But now, I don't know. Now I think I, I would expect I don't get treated badly here for being American. I get treated... uh Fairly for not giving their language a shot by some people. And some people know I could learn to speak Danish and never really know what the fuck, how to fucking do it. <laughs> it's like English. There is a way to speak proper English. and blah, blah, blah. There's so many fucking rules to it. you got to be a, a real anal asshole to abide by. So what I would do to Danish would be horrid. <laughs> I find shortcuts when I speak English. What do you think I'd be looking for in Danish? You know, because me no se haba la espanol either. You know what I mean? Bilingual is not important. I was telling people on the radio for a while, I think in the long run, even what I'm doing, communication is its kind of like the, the worst thing you can do to fix a problem. You know, let's talk about it. Well, no. Why can't we as people just figure out what the best thing is and do that instead of all this bullshit we call markets and competition? It's just a way to sell inferior crap to make more money. But what, like what Larry did, Larry, he has figured out with a group of other folks how to do what's good for everybody. Now, sadly, we live in a capitalist world. People want profit, money. And that'll hold out, you know, people will hold out giving up their, their part of the equation to answer the problem because they want their money first. Before I give up my answer, I want to get paid. Well, to do that, you got to go patent something. And what Larry is doing, we'll never get a patent. And what I learned off the internet is, if you can go to the patent office and come back with a patent, what you made is worth nothing. It has no value at all, except retail value. Profits for some corporation or group of investors. It's insane. We want to make money using money to make money. I mean, wow, whatever happened to uh, working? I remember those days. Well, even me, I had to buy something and then sell it to make profit. 
because if you buy a big quantity of something and you have customers that buy small quantities of something, well, that's how you do business. And then you get these greedy pricks that they want to be international and they want to be worldwide and all this bullshit. So they, they stomped all of us individuals out of existence. We're not allowed, because of the COVID, you know, we're not allowed to behave in traditional fashions that we grew up doing. It's, it's all over. It's gone. It's finished. But we've got the internet to keep the illusion alive. Like there's still something that we're going to get. You know, we're going to get somewhere. Well, no, that's the goal is to get you out of the moment you're in and put you into tomorrow and keep you there. Always chasing tomorrow so that you're never in today. I had people think that my traveling days was like that. You know, well, you never live in where you're at. You're always worried about where you're going. Well, I would stay in places sometimes for months before I'd leave it. And think, wow, I learned a lot of shit, or I picked up a new trade, or I had a fling, or whatever it was at the time. And whatever that was ended, and now it's time to go do something different. But it was interpreted as running away. No, there's still a guy on the freaking internet here on the chat site. He thinks that uh, I'm some kind of coward because I don't want to live in the United States. Wow, what, what the fuck? is the attraction at this point in time to live in there. I don't see it. I don't see it in South Dakota. And South Dakota's got a better deal right now on the exterior than the, the state I'm living in. But my wife wouldn't go with me. I had to be free. <laughs> but I would, I would uh, that's what freedom is. See? That's why people talk about it all the time, but they don't really want to do it. It's, it's like a last resort. Being free is... Uh, it's being alone and, and not bound to anything or anyone. That's what I think freedom truly is. I don't think you can be free in the company of a wife. What about when your wife says, Hey, honey, will you go pound that thing in the backyard? I can't do that. Okay. You couldn't could have asked me when I was out here working. you got to wait <laughs> until I'm sitting down. Thank you. But I don't want her doing it because she probably hurt herself with the tool that's necessary to do the job. And uh, then I get to bitch about something because I'm Jewish. Anyway, uh, I don't know. I, I don't wish bad on other people. I just don't think I'm empathetic enough to feel any responsibility for people out of my view. You know, if I can't see you, you're not there. You're, you're an illusion in my mind, like Grimner. Grimner is electronic. I've never met Grimner. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't, well, I've seen your picture on the thing, but how would I know you if I, what would you be doing in Denmark in the first place? Say I ran into you in the street. You look like a lot of these other guys, biker guys. I don't even think I'd notice you. I think I just, oh, there's a biker. Okay. And continue my stroll and go, hey, 10 minutes later, you go, boy, that looked like somebody I saw a picture of. Who was it? <laughs> so, I, I, I. Oh, man. But, you know, it, so there's a reality to the electronic world, but it's limited. You know, I know I know what I believe I know because I don't know. I'm trusting, you know, I'm trusting that Grimner is going to be there and open up his site and it's going to be there and I can click buttons and talk to Beetle and, you know, the little things, and knowing somebody so far away that lives in the country I'm from that I can get along with at my age now, especially after losing my entire family, uh, that's got a value. Uh, to me, might not be important to Beetle, but Beetle's kind of a fun guy. He types some crazy stuff, and it, if you read too much into it, it's just joking around. He's just playing, having a giggle. And once I learned, once I read what he was writing and saw it and understood a little bit and made my mind up about what it meant, then it was easier for me to chat with him. But other people, I don't know. I, I guess I'm fucking off. You told me to fuck off, so I fucked off. I try not to talk to you. I don't want to bother you. That's not my intention. If you don't like me, 
put an Iggy on my name. I'll use the same fucking name. I'll be Flash somebody. I won't come in under other names. And if you don't like what I type, just please put an Iggy under my name and none of that other crap. Because I don't think uh, text on a screen without some kind of uh, ongoing provocation like what Anti was doing to Beatle yesterday. Oh, it's just horrible. Of course, that's my opinion of it, you know. Uh, it was obvious to me. It was just poking, poking, poking. And he tried to tell him in the first place, you know, be nice. Let's just not do this. But antagonizers, which I am an antagonizer, I just try to do it uh, without being personal about it. I'm an ambiguous antagonizer. I'm talking to the world, all of you fuckers, all 12 of you that are listening or not listening, whatever. Uh, those are the people I'm telling. Not, not everybody. And if you don't want to hear it, you're free to put a big check mark under my name where it says ignore, and life will continue. Because I don't have anything to say to anybody that they haven't heard somewhere else over the time on the internet. We're just preaching to the choir, you know. But that reinforcement that we're not fucking insane is really important to me. Because I live in a foreign country where there's not a lot of support out there. I have to bring my support to my home and talk to them nose to nose. And <laughs> oddly enough, they do. They tell me things that I never thought of. And went, wow. And then they keep me informed about, well, the government is sending the information out to the press about what they're going to do. And then as soon as the people go, no, then they back off and they, they change their mind. Mm. And hopefully, I guess I did a whole show. That should do it. And uh, thank you so much, Grimner. And we had a little chatter at a job doctor and Circulo and Kate and uh, who else? Vinny and there's a few. Ah, uh, there's Beetle. So there was a few people y yapping while I was uh, doing my thing on the radio. But uh, maybe I'll try to be more focused and, and I'll do the... Uh, don't forget. I don't forget you. I don't forget anybody. It's just some of us don't get along. It's not. A, it's not. A, it doesn't matter. If you don't get along with somebody, avoid them. That's the easy. Hey, Cowboy Tech. It, the easiest thing for me to do. I don't know about you, but you know, it's something I'm reading or somebody like Anti, for example, because this is open for everybody to, to see on the uh, type. Uh, all I said at the end, what well, you know, there. This is just too much. Nobody deserves to be treated like this. Especially a group of people that all believe the same thing. And you come in here with your rhetoric from the government and state, which Grimm has made a platform of liberty. You know, real liberty media people. You know, don't, and I've seen the guy come in and, and mock liberty when there was nobody else around to read his crap but me. But, you know. Freedom of speech is a double-edged sword. No, but, you know, it's not a solution, but it's sure, it, if I can't read what some people are writing, I can't get mad about it, can I? This is about me, Kate. I'm, you should do a radio show, and you should, you can tell me what you would do. I would listen. May not do it. Exactly. Oh, yeah, the problem is still there. Okay, so, for once, I was on the... Uh, agreeing side where the man pushed he just pushed it too far you know it, it was he was seemingly to be annoying on purpose i i don't i'm annoying just because i'm annoying i don't mean to be annoying i think other people that get that way at a certain part in the conversation they were having this that one guy was going out of his way to be irritating to people that didn't agree with it and we're trying to help him, and he doesn't. He doesn't see the help as help. He sees the help as threat because he believes his government. I know. I, I, I. Oh, hey! I lost my mind so long ago. I don't know what it would look like. Um. Oh yeah, but see here, I'll clear that up. What I heard, Cirque, was Woody was responding to uh, because he had moose. On block, he was responding to 
not her, but sh- or somebody else, but it was like at her. Or he was using, I don't know. I, maybe that didn't explain it any better. What I took, I guess the best way to put it, it was a misunderstanding, but he meant what he was saying, but it was not, it was out of context. It had nothing to do, he should have never done it. Or he was pissing at that uh, hairy guy about using YouTube. And that's all I've heard, but that's what I think. Uh, yeah, I heard Harry last night on the radio with Vinny. And uh, he's he was uh, promoting, like Larry, they're for open source. They want they want people to, to know what the fucking other guy is doing. It's a better way to work. No secrecy. And YouTube is a platform, period. It's there. If you can put stuff on it that won't get censored and make money, well, this is a time in history where going hungry is not a fucking fun thing to do, especially when you got to wear a mask and stay six feet away from people. You know, starving to death is a lot easier when nobody will talk to you or or be close to you. They wouldn't even know. Just lay down on the ground and die because hey, we're we're protecting ourselves from you. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, re- I, re- I came in in the morning on that uh, when Woody was making was making the request to be gotten rid of. He was begging to be blocked. And uh, wow, I I I, I, I don't know, I, hmm. but I've heard little bits. You know, I've seen little bits on the internet over it since. And just people have lost it. You know, as a collective, we are so scattered and. Ununited. Everybody wants something different. You know, uh, Beetle wants his tail. I don't know. Every time you reboot, maybe that takes it away, and then you got to ask for it, or so you got to beg for it. Give me my tail. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I was listening to. Uh, I got tired at the end, but I was pretty pretty blazing last night, and then I saw. About, I don't know, t- 10 30 or so. so. Then he was going to come on the radio with somebody else. I wanted to hear what they were going to say. Couldn't hear Vinny's questions for the first 10 minutes. He was really low, and I, I can't blast my. I could hear the. I Harry. Could hear Harry clear as a bell, and I hear Vinny in the background. And then, he, then Harry would talk for 10 minutes, but I'd never heard the questions. So it really it was hard to follow. <laughs> But what I got out of it was uh, this guy's like me. He's for an unpopular idea that will help people if they fucking listen. You know, the, tools are tools. Good God! If, if you need a hammer, don't use a screwdriver. It's not going to work as well. Get a hammer. And and how I mean it is, if you need a YouTube to accomplish a goal, then use it. There's nothing wrong with that. This is what we have, you know. If you need, uh, what is it, Twitter or Facebook, use it. I'm not going to use it. I never tell anybody else to get off it. In fact, got a quick story about the YouTube being a success the other day here, and then I'll quit the show. My wife was taking her walk or stroll or something, and she comes right back, and she says, I got to leave Hannah. There's a stray dog out there. So she goes takes the dog and runs into or goes to see her friend Christine down the road. And Christine's got Facebook. So they put up a we found a dog thing. And they were hoping that nobody would come and claim the dog because it's such a cool dog. But she said like 20 minutes, the guy, the owner, guy, I think, had, oh, you found my dog. Thank you so much. I'll come get him right now. And in that in that situation... I can see the usefulness of uh, having Facebook available to you where it benefited people and, you know, something good came of it. But then I see links that have been banned off YouTube and I got to go to BitChute to watch them and they're true links. They're talking about the reality of what is happening and they don't want the average guy like me to hear it. They want it to all go away. They call it misinformation now. So that's why Anti is all spinning. Either that or he's just a troll, and this is what he does. He likes to upset people and 
make him think he's on the other side. I'm not on a side. I don't give a fuck for Republicans. I don't give a fuck for Democrats, queens, kings. I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. What I care about is what I can see, you know, what's in front of me, what's in the room. And when I look around the room, it's comfortable and uh, there's no bad guys in it, you know. No threats, no no uh, no negative, you know. It's it's a comfortable place for me to be. And then I get into the chat and somebody says something completely ignorant and then on my my wonderful side just dies. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I quit. I think that's enough out of me. Thanks a lot for playing along with me, y'all. Uh, that was, I don't know. It's like uh, an opportunity to talk to people all at once. It's just more fun when I got somebody to talk back. And Mary was really good at that. She she had a way of making me laugh. Hey, Vinny. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of lost with you, too, sport. You know, you told me to shut the fuck up one time too many, and I, I don't know what to make of you anymore, so... Texting or chatting with you in the room, eh, I say hi, and I don't want to start no more shit with you. I'm tired of it. So, that, I hope that explains my lack of communication. Uh, and thank you back, Kate, because, you know, I wouldn't do this. It would be kind of pointless to do this if it wasn't entertaining to people out there for some fucking reason. You know, outside of, you know, even if it's just because I think a bunch of weird stuff that nobody ever thinks of. Yeah, yeah, right. Anyway, uh, I've always been the oddball. You know, that's just my life. And now, I live with somebody that's just like me, but opposite. You know, socially. But our core beings, we're we're the oddballs. We don't think like other people. And the friends I've acquired over the time I've been here, uh, and acquaintances. I got two closest friends, and then a lot of people I know. But these two kids that me and Cirque have uh, been friendly with. They're, uh, they come over for dinner and, and Cirque gets to sit and speak Danish and do a Danish meal and all the things that I took away from her, you know, marrying an American. So like, this is what I mean. Life brings to me the things that I need if I'm aware enough to look at them and recognize them and use them, you know, the tools available to create whatever the hell I'm trying to do. And I don't think I'm special or, or anything like that. I think I just know. And if, if there was a lesson to teach another person in the world, it would be to trust yourself and quit following the fucking crowd. The crowd will fuck you up the ass the minute you ain't looking. They have no loyalty. They're a crowd. So, uh, of course, you know, Grimm's got his version of it. Kate's got her version yeah. Well, eh, you don't. I don't tell people that. So I just figure when people tell me that, they're not joking. You you joke behind the truth, and uh, no, I don't play. I'm tired of it. I told you that when we were doing radio together. Oh, but see, my opinion of stuff is just my opinion, uh, and I don't. Know. It, it, see, you can't. You can't let somebody see through your eyes what you see. You can only tell them what you see, and that's where the trouble all starts. Anyway, I love RLM, Grimner. I, I miss my you know, communication with uh, my fellows, people I, you know, like Vinny and Kate, and you know, the people that I grew up with that understand what I know. We don't have to live together to know it. You know, we, there's lots of us. And we're scattered all over the fucking place. And, uh, wow, getting together at any level for any period of time, especially right now with all the censorship and people want to control everything other guys and other gals do. It's just ridiculous. You know? Let, and I agree with you about this, too, Kate. When you get to a certain point of being a, uh, nasty to a whole room of people, then, it, yeah. Uh, I had Hans to uh, take my aggravation out on. That was Hans was for. You know, uh, we never saw eye to eye about anything, so it, it was easy. And, it, and it, he played back with it. He hated my words. I hated his words. But 
that was it. I never went out of my way to, to replace him with anyone. He he was he's finished. I'm I'm finished. Now it's just get along with people and um, I don't know. I don't want to uh, spend the rest of my days. I'm an old guy now, so you know to me. And I don't want to spend the rest of my days fucking arguing and being told to shut up and fuck off. I, I went through that in person enough to where I left. So here I am, you know. And, and I feel that if you want me to shut the fuck up, stop typing it and go to my name. I'll put my name up. For you. I'll flash somebody always from now on. Put a click on the ignore thing and you never have to tell me to shut up because you never have to listen to me again. Thank you. And let me see if I can get this thing. I got to open that. Hold on a minute. Stop the server. Okay. And that should do it. Bye, everybody.